episode 9100 simple life truths welcome back killing expectations births happiness 100 simple life truths episode 90 episode 90 is great um i just got back from center city i just got back from uh doing my photo series it is 10 13 and it is um 428 it is 4 28 p.m. It is uh October 13th. My sister's birthday is coming up in like nine days. My older sister her birthday is coming up in like nine days. Um it's crazy. We are episode 90 right now. Killing expectations births happiness. So the less expectations you have, the more happier you'll be. And I fully agree with that. I fully agree with that. I burn my tongue, man. I burned my tongue. I had two different types of teas today. I had a um a, a what was it called? A red berry malong from um the random tea house. Dope, dope spot. Um I've been going there since I moved to well not since I moved to Philly. Maybe well yeah, I did go to the first year I moved to Philly, so I can guess I can say that since I moved to Philly. Um their tea is amazing, the ambiance is amazing, uh the Workers are amazing. I wouldn't want to call them baristas. I think that's only for coffee. The brewers, the brewers, I guess. I don't know. They're amazing. Um, I had chai tea for the first time today. From there, um, the uh, the worker. I guess I'm just calling her the worker. She um, asked her for a recommendation, and she recommended the chai tea. So, I had the chai. I had the red berry Milan. Um, great stuff. Great stuff, but I did burn my tongue. I did burn my tongue on it. And I walked for about five hours today. I walked for about five hours because I walked from basically the uh, train station from the the um, path train. Not is it the path train? Uh, not the path train. The um whatever train, like the one that goes to New York. I walked from there. Roughly from the FMC building, basically from the FMC building. If you know Philly, you know the FMC building. I walk from there all the way to Written House, and from Written House to um the Random Tea House, and then I walked around Written House twice. Um, once when I first got there, then I went and got the tea, and then when I came back, I walked around Written House again. So I was out for about five hours, right? Um interacting with the people as much as i could getting photos and everybody that asked for a photo actually said yes so that's a blessing but i didn't ask many people <laughs> i didn't ask many people because i'm very um self-conscious very self-conscious but we're gonna get into this one killing expectations birth happiness and i agree with that one whole, wholeheartedly because um the less expectations you have the happier you'll be you won't be you won't open yourself up for um, letdown and for disappointment. So I'm going to get right into it. The fewer expectations you have, the better off you are. It would be simple minded to speak in complete absolutes. Expectations are not always the enemy. Ambition comes from ex expectation and that doesn't sit well with being content and happy. I agree. Wanting less will make you happier than getting more, but getting more get you more and much of our progress is a as a species come from our discontent with our current situation very well written very well written wanting less will make you happier but getting more gets you more and much of our progress as a species come from our discomfort with our current situation oh, i love that i love that it's very well written it makes perfect sense and it's true 100% true. Wanting more gets you more. Expecting less makes you more happy. But we advance ourselves by being uncomfortable in our current situation. That goes into um, what I always say. Comfortability. Being comfortability kills progress. And um, there's no growth in our comfort zone. And there's no comfort in our growth zone. So we have to be. We have to always want to advance. But there's a fine line between expecting more and not being so disappointed if it doesn't come around right this is where you have 
to have an honest conversation with yourself and ask the question, what do I really want? Mm. For me, I have that, I have that question. I ask myself that question often. I have that conversation with myself a lot, a lot. And, um, I've learned that what I want changes daily. It changes daily, like the broad, the broad scheme of things, the basic things that I want, um, the things that I know I'm going to achieve within time, they stay the same, but the, um, the accoutrements, I want to say the accoutrements, I know I'm saying the word wrong, but the, the, um, the sides are, they change, right? So I could say I want a chocolate cake, right? But do I want that chocolate cake with chocolate frosting and sprinkles? Or do I want that chocolate cake with vanilla frosting and Oreos on top, right? I know I want the cake. I'm going to get the cake. But the things that are going to be around it, for me, change daily, right? And understanding that your wants can change, your wants do change, lessens the blow of when they do change or when you don't achieve one of your wants, you can always revert back to something else that you wanted, all right? And it's always to write these things down so you know how how your, your thought process and your mind is changing from a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because it's something to be studied. It's something to, um, it's something to understand. Understanding how, how you change and how your thought process changed based on your environment or just based on things that you learn it, uh, it helps you in the long run within knowing yourself and being able to have an honest conversation with yourself, knowing that your thoughts and your ideas change, right? So knowing what you want, knowing the broad scheme of what you want is key. Knowing the little intricate details may not be as important as knowing the main focus, the main goal, right? And we all have main goals. We all have side, side goals, side quests that we want. Um... For me, my wants, I don't rate, as I think about it right now, I don't know what I want. So I, I, I fight with myself a lot on this or that, this or that, which one is going to be better for me, right? And the thing that you want may not be the thing that you need, right? We got to focus on the things that we want, but before that, we got to focus on the things that we need or the things we feel like we need, right? Because you could feel like you need something, and you could be wrong. You can be, you can live without it. Because if you don't have it now and you're living, you don't really need it. It's a want. So differentiating between your wants, your needs, and just knowing what the wants and needs are, paramount. If you want to be happy, that's a choice. The process can begin by reducing the amount of shit you desire in your life. If you want to move ahead, then there needs to be a level of discomfort and malcontent. I like that word malcontent. The unhappiness itself can serve as fuel to move you ahead. And you'll see that some of the most ambitious folks to ever walk the earth were never satisfied and kept moving forward. Yeah. I don't think that you should never be satisfied. I think that you set goals, achieve those goals, live in a satisfaction, but then set new goals. Always keep advancing. I agree with the part where you need to always advance and you need to always be moving forward and always be and uh, but not not necessarily being dissatisfied with the journey. The journey is the is the best part of the process. So learning, achieving the goals that you're achieving and creating new goals is part of the journey. And it's the best part of the journey because you learn more and more about yourself as the days go on, as life goes on. You keep moving forward, you keep moving forward. And as you achieve certain goals, you are able to take a step back, appreciate the journey that it took you to get to where you are, and then set new goals. Like for me, I already have a list of goals of things that once I accomplish this one, then I can start working on this one. But even though I'm in the process of working on this one, I'm still in the process of getting ahead so that I can put more effort into the second goal. So my main goal, 100%, is school. That's my main goal right now. Nothing takes priority over me getting my, my degree, me graduating, right? And I'm close. I'm really, really close to graduating. And every day I wake up, I'm that much closer. Every class I take, I'm that much closer. I literally have eight more classes left. 
eight more classes left. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the classes are getting harder. But I love it. I love the process. I love everything that it's taking me to get to where I need to be. And once I get there, I can sit back and look at the journey, look at every class that I took, every A that I got, every B that I got, every C, every D, every E, and every F that I got. Did I say E? Did we get, did I, get I don't think I ever got an E. <laughs> but every D's and F's, right? I just realized I skipped E's. Why did they skip E's? I don't know. <laughs> did they skip E's? Why did they skip E's? Get yeah, A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. Sweet. Why did I just think about that? Anyway, um, it's weird. I just lost my train of thought. But everything that I'm going through, right? Every class I could sit here and even I could watch this this episode, episode ninety. Once I graduate, once I get my diploma. I'd, move my tassel over. I think, it's, I think it's called a tassel. Move it over and I'm like, um, I did it. Like, I'm, I don't have to do my discussions on Thursdays. I don't have to do my discussions on Sundays. I don't have homework anymore, right? But then the minute I graduate, the minute I can go full force into my next goal, which is getting my pilot's license, right? And although I'm working towards that now with the studying that I'm doing, the research that I'm doing, you know what I mean? I'm researching different planes, different, you know, um, how to fly a plane, right? It's just another goal. So I'm not, it's not to say never be satisfied. It's to be, I'm going to be satisfied once I complete this goal, but I know that I got more goals to come. I got more things that I need to jump right back into and complete so then I can be satisfied again. Satisfied, 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 satisfied. More goals, more goals, more goals. Keep Keep yourself busy in terms of keep keep a list of goals that you want to accomplish. And once you accomplish one, you pick up another one. And you start putting all that time that you was spending on the one goal onto the next goal. Tobacco bergamot. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's one of my favorite candles. I've lit this one a couple times while I'm um, doing these episodes. Um, It kind of comes off as a paradox, but really but it's really not you're not wired to be happy all the time happiness is a mood and most of us associate it with being with what's happening in our lives rather than how we choose to react to those things happening correct i agree with that don't subscribe to the existence of everlasting happiness exactly once you once i graduate i'm going to be happy trust me i'm going to be happy i'm going to be grateful I'm going to be proud of myself. It's something that I, that I accomplished, right? And if I'm being honest, a lot of things that I start, I don't actually have the faith in myself that I'm going to finish. School was a big thing. I'm like, all right, you know what? It's something to do. Let me just do it. Take these classes. See what it's about. And then the further I got, the closer I got, the, the, you know, the more knowledge I got in the field that I'm in, it's like, you know what? I can really do this. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to finish. I'm going to complete it. Same thing with this series. In all honesty, when I started, my goal was to do the 100 episodes. And I didn't I didn't believe that I was going to be able to do it. I, in all honesty, I did not believe I was going to be able to do it. I thought I was going to fizzle out. Um, of course, I never cared about like the views and stuff like that. But at some point, I, I did think, like, again, these views are going to affect me because no one's going to be watching it. But it, it was... I had to remind myself that I'm not doing it for the people. I'm doing it for myself. You know what I mean? And I'm still to this day doing it for myself. I'm glad people are watching. I'm glad that people are enjoying it or not enjoying it. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you're not enjoying it, that's perfectly fine too. You know what I mean? If you don't agree with the things that I'm saying, that's perfectly fine too. Um, I'm glad I, I I'm able to have a voice in really for myself. But if other people are listening and understanding. I'm grateful for that. You know what I mean? And I know for a fact that I'm going to complete the series. I'm going to complete it. It's something that I started not necessarily understanding if I was going to finish or not, but now knowing that I will finish. No matter what, I will finish. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing. And once I'm done, I'm going to be, again, grateful, happy that I did it, but then I'm going to start another series. You know what I mean? Because happiness is... It's fleeting. It's over. It's you know what I mean. You have, it's an endless cycle of of searching for the happiness. Every episode that I do, once I hit that 
that stop button, I'm happy. I'm ecstatic. I'm like, damn, I did it. I really, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so, excuse me. It's a wonderful, it's wonderful and desirable. It's a wonderful and desirable idea as well as a great marketing tool for moving, for movies, television, and religion, but very ideological. There's utility in all the emotions we feel, and it's up to us to actively utilize them as a gift, as the gifts they can be. Anytime you are disappointed, try to identify the expectation that wasn't met. Ask yourself if it was expectation worth having in the first place. The disappointment itself can serve as motivation to lace up your boots and take another stab at it. It can also serve as a lesson that maybe it's time to revisit reality and strengthen that relationship. It always starts with being honest with yourself. Yes, that's the main thing that I want a lot of people to take out of this series is being honest with yourself, learning yourself. You are with yourself 100% of the time. You are the only person that has to deal with yourself 100% of the time. I don't care if you're married, your kids, whatever the case may be. They're not with you 100% of the time. They're not. You are with you 100% of the time. And you have to be honest with yourself first and foremost, right? You have to be true to yourself. Learn who you are. Learn what you desire in life. Learn what ticks you off. Learn what, what motivates you. Learn you to the best of your ability. You should be learning yourself every single day. Put yourself in controlled environments. I've said it before. Put yourself in, in controlled environments to fail, but leave with a lesson. Learn that, you know, whatever it is that you need to learn about yourself to move you forward so that the next situation will be even more, I guess, doable or easy for you to overcome. Something else that he said here. Um, the disappointment itself can serve as a, as motivation to lace up your boots and take another stab at it. Yeah, every time I, I fail, and I fail often, I um, like today, I went out. And I don't necessarily think I failed, right? But for some odd reason, I thought that I was going to be able to boost my confidence enough to take the 100 photos that I needed for this series and do it in one day. And I realized it's, it's not, for me, it's not possible because I don't like talking to people, right? <laughs> um, At least not with a cold approach, like, oh, how you doing? And explaining the whole premise of what it is that I'm doing, right? But people are actually nice. Like the conversations that I have with people are, they're really, really nice people out there. And people are happy to help people without having to stretch out their hand any further than they would on a normal daily basis, right? It takes nothing to stop somebody for two seconds, take a photo and keep it and have them keep it pushing, right? I showed them the photo, they think it's beautiful. Some of them ask for my information so I can send them the photos. And it takes nothing out of their day, right? But for me, I just feel inconvenience. I feel like when I'm inconveniencing people, I don't want I don't want to inconvenience anybody, right? I want people to, you know, watch this series on their own time or if they enjoy it, watch it. If they don't enjoy it, don't watch it. It's fine, right? And I don't want to stop people or beg people to do something that's gonna help me benefit me. That's just how I am. I'm just conscious of I'm just conscious of other people's time, right? And I actually bought this guy lunch today, right? Um, for what reason? No real reason. Honestly, no real reason. It was actually the last person I took a photo of. I'm walking, I see three guys. They stopped me. It's like, oh well, uh, what kind of camera is that? Oh, it's you know, it's a Sony, whatever. Um, I have a macro lens on it, but I'm using it for my portraits. Because for me, they just come out more crisp, right? Um He's like, the three guys, they're all, well, one guy was basically pretty much asleep, so I didn't even take a photo of him. But um, the other two guys, I'm talking to them, I, I give them my email, they give me their email, I'm going to email them their pictures soon. And the other guy, you know, he's like, bro, I'm, I'm hungry, can you help me? And I started to just say, I ain't got it, keep it pushing. But you know what, I said, from where? I said, from where? And... I bought him. I bought him lunch. Bought him lunch. It cost me thirteen dollars. Bought him lunch, and he was forever grateful. He kept trying to hug me. I didn't really want to hug him because 
I just did it, right? It's, I just, I'm not, if I don't talk to people, why would I just hug random people? But, um, I don't know where the story was going. But what I'm saying is, even though I, I, I didn't complete the main goal that I wanted to do, I wanted to take the 100 photos in one day and just get started on editing and putting the book together. I still have time because I want to drop this on my birthday in three months. My birthday is in like three months, basically. And as of right now, I have seven, seven photos out of the 100. And I know it's going to get cold out soon and it's going to be less likely for me to go out and do what I got to do. But I, I'm i this closer. I'm this much closer. And, I, and my expectation was to finish it today, but I had to adjust my expectations so I could still come out of the situation happy, still come out of it motivated. And even though I'm disappointed that I didn't get the 100 photos, I'm motivated to go out there and do it again. Lace up my boots and take that motivation as um take that motivation to lace up my boots and take another stab at it. Because it's not gonna end until I get it done. And when I get it done, then I can look back and say, you know what? I accomplished that. Now I gotta go to another city and do it again. You know what I mean? So always on a relentless pursuit of getting the content that I need so I can present it to you guys and you know. Wherever that takes me, it takes me. I have expectations, right? But I'm limiting my expectations so that I can limit my disappointment. That's what this chapter is all about. That's that's what this episode, this video is all about, is the being realistic, but also limiting your expectations so you can limit your disappointment. We're also going after the going after the most you can go after. Going after the absolute most you can go after and achieving the most you can achieve. Like he said, it sounds like a paradox, but it's it's not. It's just being more in control of the things that affect you, your 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 moods and your um your feelings. Your moods and your feelings. Um with that being said, I want a I want a false tattoo. I don't know why I keep thinking. I want two tattoos. This is so random. I want a one of one tattoo and I want a thoth tattoo. I haven't had ta I haven't got a new tattoo in a while, but that's what I want. Um with that being said, episode 90. Episode 90. Remember, episode 100 will be dropping on October 31st, Halloween night. I don't know. I want to do something special for it. I haven't decided yet. I do actually want to go live for I was supposed to go live for episode 90. I was supposed to go live for this episode. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow I'll go live and maybe I'll announce it so that people could tune in and I'll share it so that people could tune in at the moment. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe that's what I'll do. No promises. No promises. Um, tomorrow, episode 91 will drop. Um, I want you to remember, again, your pain is the breaking of the shell that encloses your understanding. It is the potion in which your the physician within you heals your sick self. Therefore, drink his remedy in silence and tranquility. Again, your pain is the breaking of the shell that encloses your understanding. It is the remedy in which the physician within you heals your sick self. Therefore, drink his remedy in silence and tranquility. Whew. Yes, correct. <laughs> correct. And then the other one is to savor every second. Embrace every minute, love every hour, and compete every day. The compete every day is the most important part, right? Because the hours, the minutes, the seconds, they you can lose track of time, right? But as long as you know at the end of the day when you get home and you get ready to go take that shower before bed, you know that you competed and you gave it your all. And what you was today, you know tomorrow you'll be better. And what you was today, you was better than yesterday. So always just compete, and if and if the con and you are your own competition, right? You are your own competition. You are only competing with the person you was yesterday, right? And it sounds crazy, but you're making it harder for the person that you're going to be in the future. But the person you're going to be in the future is going to be grateful for the sacrifices that you made today, because then the person in the future is going to be able to live and thrive in abundance because of your sacrifices that you made today. 
with that being said it's quick simple easy honest and true i appreciate y'all for tuning in um tell me tell me how to work on my confidence man <laughs> tell me how to work on my confidence i'm actually a really confident person but i just don't like cold approaching people it's just not it's just not something that i'm uh good with it's not something i'm good with but um i appreciate y'all for tuning in remember um i haven't said this in a while but like comment share subscribe all that good stuff and i got another video around here that you guys can watch um i appreciate y'all stay 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 beautiful stay firm on your beliefs stay honest with yourself learn yourself and all the good stuff